Rise and shine, everybody. <laughs> it's Toronto 234. They on the mic with. Welcome to Toronto 234. <laughs> <laughs> this is the. I was trying something different. It worked for Kylie. Do you know what Rise and Shine is, though? I don't know. I thought you were just making up a song. Oh, no. That's a song? Okay, it's not really a legit song. It's just a clip that, you know, has become Viral? a social media sensation. Is that a left will. stroke? <laughs> <laughs> Mary, do you know Rise and Shine? No, girl. What? Nobody knows Rise and Shine, man. What, guys? Like, it's a viral, viral, viral moment. Like, even if you don't care for the Kardashians and Jenners and whatever... You know what? We'll do a poll. I want to know how many audience members of ours know that versus don't. You know what I think? What? I don't even think audience members care oh, about Rise okay. and Shine. Okay. Fair enough. I don't care about that. We can move on. Yeah, um, let's do it. But, I mean, con- like, in converse to that, it's definitely not very nice outside. It's not shining. It's rainy. It's dull for the mm-hmm. second week in a row. Maybe third. I don't know. It's been like this for a few weeks now, right? Yeah, I, I mean, like it. it's the fall, so... I Again, it's the fall. It's not the spring. Right, exactly. So I don't get why it's raining so damn much. Like, it's fine if you're cold a little bit, but you don't need to rain, too. Anyway, anyway, enough about weather. Let's get into quick hits. Yes, please. I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> just as we're about to start recording, we got breaking news. Maybe it's not that breaking anymore, <laughs> but it was breaking news. They said they found Kid. Mm. T.Y. Savage. Mm. This was in France? Mm. Am I making that up? Paris. Okay. Paris. Paris is in France, yes. In Paris, France, <laughs> they were <laughs> making out. No, they were not making out. They were French kiss- kissing. They were French kissing. They were French, French kissing in France. Only makes sense. It only makes sense. Like, I'm what else are you supposed that. to do? And they were on stage, apparently, yeah. doing this. So it was for the world to see, which makes me wonder motives. But react, what do you think? <laughs> um, I agree with that. That just wrapped it up in a beautiful word. You can't agree with me, like no, no, no. I'm, I'm wrapped. Like I'm just saying, it's motive is all I think of. Like, hmm. Why did you? What's going on? Why'd you do that? I mean, it it reminds me of um that stretch of time where Rihanna and Drake were dancing on any stage they could find, like grinding on each other. Do you know Mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? It's like that. It's like you're just teasing us because you know we all care. But I don't think it's really going to do anything or mean anything in the long run. Mm. So you don't think it's a possibility? You're just toying with us. You're just playing with us. But, I mean, I would have, I, on the same token, I would not be surprised if days from now they confirm their relationship or whatever. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. I don't think Which, what do you would. think is more likely? Do you think it's the latter or the former? Um, I don't think they're going to announce their relationship because it... There's literally no purpose in announcing a relationship. Yeah. Even if they had a relationship, first of all. Yeah. Right? Like, I kind of look at it similar to, like, Simeon Files or yeah. Simeon and Declan Go, yeah. which is Simeon Files. It's not real. It's just for play. Just for Simeon play. and Declan Go, like, oh, it's real, but it's not for your consumption. So it's either one of those. It seems more like the Simeon. If I want to use that comparison, it seems more like the Simeon Files one, where it's like, okay, they're just doing it because they yeah. have good chemistry. Yeah. It attracts people. But I can imagine, I can see it being a real relationship. I still just don't think they would announce it. Like, unless they're getting married, there's right. no point in them coming like, oh, we're together, guys, officially, like... I guess what I stuff. what I mean by confirm it is, like, posting, like, an Instagram picture, where it's, like, clearly not for... Well, they've done stuff like that, low-key. Like, they've You're done, right. like, stuff where, like, it's like, oh, my, my best friend, my queen, my, like... And it's like, oh... You're like, right. that's how stuff, like, kind of... That's what sparked it even more. Like, I'm oh, trying to think of an example that like, works, um, but like I can't. synchronized Instagram posts like to each other. Like they That's really what I was gonna say. Yeah, I feel like I was gonna try to think of an example where, like, oh, like you know, like when um Drake and J Lo did that thing, but then that also wasn't really a mm-hmm. long lasting real relationship. And yeah. like you just mentioned, um, Wizkid and Ty have done this in the past, so it's like I don't know yeah. what they could do on Instagram outside of saying we are together that would confirm this any more yeah. or less. I, I think it's just that. yeah, yeah. I think we're just gonna have to. Go along for the ride and see how it goes. But yeah. Okay. Cool. Good for you, them. Would you like to see them together, or do you not care? Do I really, I really don't care. But they're not like a relationship for like I need this. You know what I mean? Like I'm a, such a Drake and Rihanna stand forever, or like a Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez <laughs> fan. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm a Justin and Selena fan forever. So with that, see, like, there's certain to. relationships where like I see you just you just to. love no. it. <laughs> No, 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 no. 
Fine, no, we're not going to talk about it. No, we're but not. But for, for my people out there who care, if you know, you know. If you know, you know. You know what I'm talking about. I do have a question, though, what? since you brought it up. Okay. Um, so what Phage tried to talk about <laughs> that we're not supposed to talk about is Justin Bieber and his wife, and Selena, and Selena singing about Justin Bieber, mm-hmm. but Justin Bieber is married, mm-hmm. and the wife said, I'll kill you. <laughs> Unnecessary white people drama. We're not even going to get involved. This, so this challenge is right. But I think it kind of goes to another thing that we are going to talk about mm-hmm. because you want to talk about it. Faye runs everything. Like that. I just oh, Faye really? Faye really? About this and I'm like, okay, cool. Okay. Um, but recently, Gina Rodriguez was like catching a little bit of flack because uh-huh. she's an Edward. Uh huh. Speaking and, of white people troubles. Right? But I realized that I was saying it that she's not white. Oh, yeah. She's not super But white. she's being treated like she's white. Right? Because that's okay. where reaction is from. Yeah. So, what do you think? What are your thoughts? For backstory, for those that of you that don't know, Gina Rodriguez was caught. Not even caught. She posted a live of her singing to, I think it was Ready or Not by the Fugees. Okay. Um, and the N-word was dropped in the in the um, song, and she said it very flippantly. It didn't look like she was like, mm-hmm. you know, she wasn't adding any sauce to it. She was just saying it like she'd be saying it on the reg. You get what I'm saying? She was just singing the song. And, of course, people have their opinions on it. Uh-huh. Um, personally, I don't think she should say it. Okay? Why? Because I know people like saying that Hispanic people are with us. They're, you know, one and the same almost to the, to the to the extent that they can say that word. But I disagree. I feel like it's complete, two different cultures, two different experiences. Like... Okay, you want to know how I look at it? When a white person looks at a Hispanic person, they don't see black. They mm-hmm. see Hispanic. Mm-hmm. So I don't see black when I see an Hispanic person. And I don't care if you're for the culture, with the culture. There's plenty of white people with the culture, for the culture. And we're not giving them a pass. Why do Hispanics just have a resounding pass in a lot of you okay. know a lot of spaces? Yeah, no, no. So I see what you're saying. Mm-hmm. I understand parts of it. Mm-hmm. I do disagree with a major part of it. Okay. I think that... Yes, you're right that Hispanics are obviously not black people. Yeah. Like, we can't really argue that. Yeah. But I do think that... And I also don't think people look at Hispanics and say, oh, Hispanics are black. Yeah. I, they're obviously not black. We know that they're different. Right. But it's kind of like we're in the same struggle. And oh, from what a lot of black people have said, right? I'm yeah. not going to represent black people. What yeah. black people have said <laughs> is they view the word as being offensive because of its historical, like, roots. Context, yeah. Right? But it, it's her, the historical context is specifically tied to white people and black people. Right. So I think that if I'm going to diagnose what has happened in general is that a lot of people in the black community, not all obviously, but Mm -hmm. a a percentage, look at Hispanics and say, you're not the people that use that word against us. So we don't, when you use that word, it doesn't carry the same meaning. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't feel like anything like that because you're not the people like right. that use it. So it's right. like specifically for white people, you, like, yes, you can't say it. Hispanic people, it depends, right? So that's where it becomes, okay, it depends. If it looks like it could be hurtful. If, I, if you look more white, then I'm looking <laughs> See, at See, that's what I'm saying. Why are we allowing those nuances, though? Like, why is it that if you're like, because um, a huge part of this is like Cardi B can say it, right? Like, mm-hmm. and it, she gets the pass overwhelmingly a lot of that being for the fact that she's like afro-latina and is more black passing if that's even a thing as opposed to like white passing like mm-hmm. a gina rodriguez but it's like once we start getting into those nuances that's how to me you should know that it kind of should just be painted with the same brush like we should have one broad stroke for that sect of people because it's like oh so is it like a light-skinned person can do something see, different than a black or darker skin person it's like why i understand what you're saying right but Life is about nuances. Like, that's just life. Sure. There's no... As much as it's easy, like you said, to just have a broad paint stroke and be like, okay, if you're not black, you can't say it. Like, what's to say, like, I can't take it another level and say, like, oh, if you're not, like, African-American, you can't... Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even though to that's... you, you're going you're gonna to tell me it's different because, right. oh, you're black. But, like, it doesn't matter. What if someone that's, like, Indian... Like, a lot of Indian people are, like, can pass for black. Like, they're really dark. Are, that's are what you, I'm saying. I'm not going to... Are, gonna, gonna are we not going to feel weird about an Indian person saying nigga? I think yeah, we do. Say all the time. I'm saying I okay, maybe that then maybe I should say from my point of view because this is a very dicey topic. From my point of view, if you're not black, just save yourself the trouble. Just don't say the word. Like I mean, why even course, go into that course, territory? I don't want. I don't think it's necessary. I don't think you should. I think you should just. It's not your word. 
Even black people within the black community, we're still arguing whether you should say it or not. Some right. black people don't think you should say it. So why right. now? Why are you not introducing yourself to a, a very no, sensitive no, no, area? Right. Like you should just not even go there. Again, it goes back to who is who. People accept the word differently. Right? Yeah. So like you said, there's some black people that don't think black people should say it. But obviously, they're not going to be part of this conversation. They don't even like you know what I'm saying. Like they're talking, they're in a different extreme of the spectrum. Right. There's a spectrum. Everyone is different. People accept different things. Mm-hmm. So the generally speaking. Hispanics are more liable to be accepted for saying the, for saying the word. Right, generally speaking. Like, I'm not going to be as offended, obviously, if a, yeah. a Hispanic person says it than a white person. But yeah. now I'm not talking about offense levels. Because same with like a black person who doesn't like the word, they're not going to be offended if a black person says it. They might just not like a black person saying it. Whereas they, they probably do feel offended with a white person saying it. You know, there's a, there's a different discussion being or taking place if you're talking about black people saying it versus white people saying it. Even if you don't like it, point blank, period. Do you get what I'm saying here? Like, let's say you're Oprah and you don't like the use of the word, period. You're not offended when a black person says it. You just don't like when they say it. I, Whereas, I, I, you I, might I, be I, offended when a white person says it. I would slightly disagree because you might be offended. But if okay, like, sure. Like, I, I'm, I'm not really of that ilk, so I can't yeah, really speak I, I to that, that be train offended. of thought. If it's just a dislike, then it's not a big deal. I think that some right. people would be offended. Right. So... Maybe there are levels to it. I'm not looking at Cardi saying it and like feeling like ill, like she's saying it. And I, even with Gina saying it, I'm not even gonna lie. I'm not looking at her like, oh my gosh, like. I'm just, just me, I just think just don't say it. To me, like, you listen, have to say it. I understand if you say like don't say it like from a PR standpoint, blah blah. blah. I'm not thinking PR. I'm just thinking life. And to me, I don't see the big deal because, like you said, she's Hispanic. Oh, we're gonna mad Hispanic people say it, and Hispanics like. Again, it comes down to your background, coming up to how you relate, it comes up to how you come Like, there's so many things, it's not so simple to, like, Hispanic. In a perfect world, or in the easiest world, if you just make no Hispanic say it, then there'll be no confusion, but life is not like that. So we know that Hispanics say it. We know that, like, if you're Hispanic, if you grow up in a black, if you grow up in a black black community, you grow up, all your friends are black, you basically grow up identifying as black, more or less. You don't see the big deal, your friends don't see the big deal, people around don't see the big deal, people accept you for it. So So let's... Wrap this up by simplifying it. For you, you don't think it's a problem. That like, if you were hanging out with her, like, at a kickback, and that song came on, and she was rocking and saying the word, you wouldn't be bothered by it. Whereas I would be. I'm, when I say bothered, I'm not going to, like, smack her off the side of the head. I would just be like, oh, maybe you shouldn't have said that, girl. But keep it moving. Whereas if a white person did it, I would be stopped in my tracks. I'm like, Really? You know what I'm saying? Like the the reaction is different. I just honestly for think, sure, but I, just, I don't necessarily think it should be taking place think, either I think way. think that we just people in general need to move on and like concentrate on bigger things. That's me. I'm not right. worried about Gina or Juga saying the N word. Like that's it makes okay. no difference to me. Right, right, right. I don't. It didn't really need to be this huge topic. I agree. Like I, but still. Yeah, there's white people that say the N word and they live. So why are we like tripping on Hispanic person? That's my point. Like. Hispanics can say it. If white people are still saying it, like, let's worry about so that first. Okay, we ended there. Hispanics like, to you, Hispanics can say it to me. I don't think, but like, why? Just we don't started off with Justin Bieber. Just like, I've heard a clip yeah, of Justin Yeah, and so I think it was kind of foul, good. but I'm right. still going to listen to Justin Bieber's music. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, right, I agree with you. Right. It's not like, to me, it's not earth shattering. The word doesn't, like, you know, really move me one way or the other in terms of how I operate on a day to day. But, yeah. um, yeah, do we have another quick hit you want to talk about? Uh, I'm trying to decide if we talk about it. We can we can mention it. We can mention okay. it. Okay. Um, we can mention the Breakfast Club. Sure. And the little yeah. trauma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So yeah, go ahead. Why don't you give the backstory? Yeah, um, really quick. Yeah, I mean, it's basically just Charlemagne went rogue, if you will. Um, Angela Yee and Gucci have a little bit of a beef. I think it stems from some like old stale news like gucci said something to angela yee and they disagree on the context of that like in terms of making passes at one another you know what uh-huh. i'm trying to say yeah, yeah, I got you. um and so gucci and angela don't have a good rapport angela stands or excuse me envy stands by angela um in the sense that angela doesn't want to do business with um with Gucci, doesn't want to interview him, blah, 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 and he agrees. So they weren't going to interview him on Breakfast Club, but Charla decided I'm going to do my own thing on my own platform and interview him anyway. Um, with that, apparently, Angela Yee unfollowed Charlemagne. Um, I don't think it's only because of the fact that he interviewed him regardless of how they felt. It's also because Gucci was saying very unfavorable things about Angela. He called her a bitch. He just was very extra with it and you know charlotte didn't really do anything to 
Yeah. To yeah. defend her. Yeah, no, I, I heard about the whole thing that's happening. I think it's interesting. I think it's a longer conversation, honestly. But I, I, I think it's two ways to it. I don't think it's as obvious as maybe some people might mm-hmm. think, where it's like he could never do it. Um, I was listening to the Joe Biden podcast, and I kind of look at you what Joe Biden said, where it's like, first of all, I start off with, like, are they friends? Mm-hmm. Right? I think people assume they're friends, and I, I would probably lean to it. Okay, they're, they consider themselves friends. So that changes things. Yeah. Not friendly, friends. Because okay. that's different. Okay. If you're, like, if my coworker at work, True. I, I'm not friends with yeah, I'm not carrying your beef. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But if you're friends or if you're family, like, yeah, that's, right. that's a difference. Yeah. So it's not even about... Like professionalism. If they're not friends, then it's about professionalism. Like, okay, like, what do you owe to your coworker? I think it would be completely fine if they're just not friends at all. If they are friends, I think that's when it becomes an issue. And I think that by the reaction, the same Angeli kind of agrees. And Angeli is like, "You were my friend, but you did this, and so I don't like you know like you don't have my back that way." That's how I see it. I but, agree with that. I think we were on the same page. I don't really have much to add on it besides like. I don't think I don't think Charlotte really owed her anything. Like you said, if they're not, they don't have that close bond. But um, at the same time, I feel like even if you don't like that, with with the type of co working relationship they have, it's not like ours. It's not like corporate America. Like they go to events together, they have functions together, they move in spaces together, and they have to have like interactions with a third party a lot of times, like outside of the three of them. So. You know, just to keep the peace, to keep everybody, everything going, going well. I feel like you should just kind of just, just remove yourself from situations that cause drama like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Just because the the nature of the co-working relationship is a little different than the rest of us. Yeah. No, I mean, I think what you're saying essentially is just is it worth it? And yeah. I mean, he always decided it was worth it for him. Yeah. And you know, maybe a lot of people from the outside now are like, nah, it probably wasn't worth it. Like, for Gucci, so <laughs> right, like it's well, not like a major. Yeah, we'll talk more about Gucci later on, I think. But oh, for yeah, now, we can talk. wrap up our, our quick hits. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm-hmm. get ready for the main events. Mm-hmm. All right, commercial break. All right, so um, main event time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I guess we're right now in the thick of the Me Too area. No, I'm not gonna say that. We're not in the thick of the Me Too era, but we've. We're coming out of it, I feel. Uh, but one topic that doesn't really get broached very much to me in the Me Too type of conversation is um, professional, no, professor. <laughs> Having a hard time with words right now. Professor student relationships. Okay. Um, I feel like I don't really hear very much about that, especially in um, Western media. It doesn't really come up very much, but we definitely know it to be a huge issue back home. Mm-hmm. Um, so. In, in light of that, we, we both watched a documentary this past weekend that we yeah. felt um, was super important, and why not talk about it on mic? Um, it was a BBC Africa production um, it's called Sex with Grades or Sex for Grades. It's called Sex for Grades, and it's yeah. available on YouTube. You should, first of all, <laughs> definitely check it out. Um, we're going to yeah. talk about it extensively, give you our feedback on what we think, and blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah, but... You should take the time out to watch it. It's actually a really, really good video. It's about an hour long, so it doesn't take that long to watch. And it's really good. It's really done well. Like, it's an interesting... They they have... So what they do is they have investigative journalists, mm-hmm. a couple of them, yeah. and they pose as students, undergraduate students, and um, also, more importantly, like, underage students. Yeah. So they pose, like, they're 17. The age... This is in Lagos and in Ghana. Mm-hmm. Um, the age... Of, I don't know if... They, they didn't mention that for Ghana, but for Lagos, I know the age of consent is 18. 18 yeah. So they posed to be, like, 17-year-old girls. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, they basically would create a relationship with their professors. Not even create. They would just be, like, professors... They just put themselves in my mentor, the line of fire, yeah. Yeah, professor, I need your help. I want to become this kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. I would like for you to help me more. Mm-hmm. And the professors would do their best to take advantage of that. And right. we had a lot of nasty tactics. Mm-hmm. A lot of, uh, let's be friends. A lot of, like, oh, I won't tell you one day. Oh. Like, a lot, a lot of that type of, like, it was very... Gross very, language. Yeah, it was very crazy. So what were your overall thoughts about it, first of all? Um, I liked having a succinct picture or image of what we all know to take place. Because uh-huh. I feel like we, we all hear stories and we know, like, tidbits here and there. But I don't think I've ever been presented with it in this manner where, like, okay, it's, it's in... 
many different circumstances. It's like, I might not even have a class with this professor. Like there was um, instances where I'm just in the camp or on campus, I'm just in the area and people are coming up to me or asking me to do things. And it's like, okay, a lot of times you hear about it for a specific grade or whatever the case might be, but it Mm -hmm. might just even be for opportunities or to transfer to the class. So seeing um, the broadness of the the epidemic and like just how it takes place and the nuances of it, it was super interesting and I appreciated it. Yeah, no, I think I agree with you. I think that we, as being connected to that culture and everything that's going on there, like, it's not a surprise. Like, there's mad movies, like, right. and all that stuff. Like, right. it's, a, it's a constant topic. Like, we're, we're desensitized to it, honestly, because mm-hmm. we know what happened. Mm-hmm. But I think it's very different, especially for me anyway, because I didn't go to university. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so I've never really actually been in the right. environment. I was right. close to anyone that, like, might be going through that. Yeah. Um, so you almost, like, don't even think of them as, like, real people that like, are going through this. So watching the, the documentary, to me, I'm like, yo, that is crazy. Yeah. Um, and another thing that crossed my mind was the age thing, which Loki also think like, we don't even pay enough attention to. So, like, Africans yeah. have a general problem with that. Yeah. Like another conversation. <laughs> but we don't pay attention to it at all. Because if you think about it, in Nigeria, you can get, you can be in university by 15. Yeah. So now we're talking about, it's possible that professors are preying on 15-year-old girls. Yeah. And they know they're 15. Like, oh, they know. Like, it's like, that's what I appreciated. Like they, they made it very clear to present certain facts. Like, hey, this is this is a fifteen year old, or this is like within the context of the conversation that we yeah. that were being taped. It wasn't just like outside on the documentary sphere. It was like these professors were faced with certain facts, and, and they, they would just ignore, ignore it. Like they, they wouldn't even like ignore it. it. I wouldn't say I think they just don't acknowledge it. it. It's, it's like, like not even a point of. It didn't make a difference. It didn't make a difference. They still felt like they were going to do whatever they wanted to do. Right. And right. Yeah, no, it, was, it was very crazy. Like, I just couldn't believe what I was watching. The craziest story, I think, was the main guy. I forget yeah. his name. Bunny Fist. Yeah, I believe Bunny it was his name. Oh, he was a pastor. Or he is. But I don't think he was it. Yeah, he is a pastor. As far as I know, no one. I think one person lost his job. I don't know who. Um, well, he tried to kill himself, thank you. Who? Bunny Fist. Okay. After this documentary came out? Yeah, whatever. I don't care about it. But, yeah, but he's still hired, though. I get it like. So, so Professor Bonneface was a pastor at like, a nearby church. And a professor. And this a very, guy, it sounds like an esteemed professor. Yeah, he's a very esteemed professor. Yeah. And like, was obviously had some intelligence to him. And was just a very... like. And I think what's worth noting when it comes to him is that it sounds like when they were filming this documentary, a lot of people were coming to them with this name. It wasn't like they stumbled across this professor. It sounds like right. he's been running rampant in this in this. Um, yeah, no, no, it is. It is. It is important. Yeah, I think it's important that we note that um, part of the documentary, I mean, which just makes sense, but we should just say it, um, was that they tried to go. They tried to create the situation with professors that they had heard people Yeah, exactly. So, exactly. so of course, like. Hopefully, hopefully, this is not all professors, professors yeah. right? So, so it's like, like hopefully, I want to say a small percentage, but I have no uh, reference. Yeah. But the point being, it, it wasn't, wasn't just like they randomly just talked professors. professors. It was more like, like okay, okay, we, we know, know one thing. We've heard about him. Right. He does a lot. Let's, Let's see if, if it's really true. true. Same, Same thing with the guy. 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 So, so they, they, they tried to get those guys. I mean, we could get to this a little bit later, but I I feel like it's not even a small percentage because it just sounds or it seems as though there's a system in place that kind of perpetuates it, much like a lot of what we heard in the Me Too movement here in the um, in the industries that were targeted here or discussed here. Um, it just seems like there's a system in place that allows for it to take place. And then also, like, one of the professors wasn't targeted at all. Like, he kind of put himself into the line of fire by walking up to the main producer, I would say, of this documentary, Kiki. So it's like... I wouldn't say it's a small percentage. I would say it's probably. I, mean, I don't want to. I don't want to put percentages on it, but I just would say it's like it's a lot more. I wouldn't like, argue with you because I have no no frame of reference. Yeah. I have no idea, but I think that's what I would just say. I was yeah. I was being hopeful. Yeah. I would just say I hope that it's a small percentage, yeah. but I have no way of knowing. Yeah. Someone out there probably has a more better way of knowing. Figures. Right. Yeah. It seems like something like someone should be doing, but mm-hmm. no one is trying to do. At least the universities Which, themselves. Yeah. They're like you said. It's a system in place that mm-hmm. allows. For a lot of this to go on, which like round. I think they were saying like in Unilag, like they just like this year in 2019. Yeah, they just finally have policy that like How? says like Sway? okay, yeah. you can't do the 
craziness. Like, and I think it's this. great that you brought up earlier that we both, I mean, you went to school here and so did I. So we both don't really have a frame of reference that's as personal as somebody who went to school in Nigeria. Right. I feel like those people would be able to say, oh, I mean, this documentary was just, I mean, this is life on the regular. Like, it didn't really shed light on anything new for them. Yeah. But it did start a more about face conversation that people just can't ignore as they choose to. Yeah. Um, like one of my favorite lines is in the documentary was something along the lines of let's shift the shame from the victim to those who perpetrate it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like all along it's this whole issue has been in the dark because we're always focused on the victim. Are they saying the truth? Are they say are they not saying the truth? But yeah. if but there are enough victims, then that's just a non, that's a non issue. Like even if, Eight out of ten of the people are lying. Like two people are saying the truth. So yeah. that, that it's like a not. I even think I even think like in this situation, like I don't even think. I don't, don't people people don't disbelieve them. People know that it happens. Like this is not like the Me Too or like all the other movements where it's like, oh, like are you t-? like people know that like it's a no, reality. we know yeah. it's a reality. Yeah. Yeah. I think like but to what you said, like it's kind of like this reality is in your face and you can't like. If, if you don't see something, it's very different than when you see it, yeah. right? If you hear something happens versus you were there, like, your reaction is just different because you were yeah. there. You saw it. You know, like, yeah. there, you can't even have any kind of doubt. You can't even say, oh, maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe the girl this. Like, nah. Because, and I think that's why I brought it up in the sense that I think we all know it's a reality. But for whatever reason, like, it's been in the dark because victims don't want to say anything because they know that once it's... um them versus a professor it always ends up being a question of the victim and not a, the professor you know what i mean i'm, I'm saying yeah. like when it ends up getting boiled down to individual cases uh-huh. that's when the conversation becomes more about the victim as opposed to the perpetrator and it's yeah. like how like that's so lopsided or like you know upside down it should be the other way around we should be you know, there's there's no reason these professors should even have mouths to say, oh, I didn't mean it like that. Like, there's so much I didn't mean it like that. I didn't. That's not how it was supposed to come off. Like, yeah. how else is it supposed to come off when you're buying her heels towards your office? Uh, they weren't accountable. Ever. And I, I feel like, well, I also went, I went to school in Nigeria. Yeah. So, like, I remember, like, I was pretty much my last year of secondary school before I left. Okay. And growing up, I definitely just knew that this is something to expect. Mm-hmm. So, I never mm-hmm. wanted to be one of the people that... That like that got that's like caught out, out there, that. looks yeah. out there. Yeah. Because like for example, like in secondary school, even there are professors like or lecturers like mm-hmm. that, that. You know, if you're one of the cool students, if, I went to graduate school, so like, if you're one of the out outspoken girls, yeah. you're the one that's just out there. Everyone notices you. Yeah. You're more likely to. Find so just, I've, always known, I've always just known that this is possible for me, and I just try to like be one of those people that's like in the back. Mm-hmm. I'm in the back. I'm never. I don't put myself. I don't want to be. I don't yeah. be in front of yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's what most, most people um, do. They try to like hide and blend mm-hmm. in and don't stand out or whatever. Yeah. It's like and, so and, and I think and I think like yeah I think I think yeah. that's a really good point. Like in the documentary, they kind of talked about how they targeted students, right? Yeah. And it was. They didn't just target any student, and you know, like you're talking about, like you know, maybe the way you dress or the way like your personality. You try not to stand out in the crowd. Yeah. But the way these professors even doing it was, of course, I'm sure they target students like that. Mm-hmm. But because university is a little bit different than like secondary school, where like you have to, you know, like you have a little more freedom and yeah. side to them. Yeah. What they specifically were doing, they're targeting students that are struggling. Yeah. So like they're targeting students they that like that, yeah. did bad. Mm-hmm. So if you did bad at like your parents are paying for school, like you're in a desperate situation, like. Now you feel like I really need a professor to help whatever, me, yeah. like, and this is how, well, how I'm gonna get my help. Like, that's why I call sex for grades. Like, if you get a good grade, you don't need to. You're, you're, you're probably not gonna be in this situation for sure. Actually, but, uh, but, 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 I'm gonna say like that where they they just target who they want to target. So some people actually they do they're really good, but they they see you and they want you. They're they gonna find a reason. Yes, yeah. which is what I was gonna bring up yeah, because yeah. I was like. Funny oh, enough, like, like, that's perfect for Mary to bring up, but because funny enough, like, although they did mention that a lot of it is targeting struggling students, none mm-hmm. of the circumstances that were aired really were about a struggling student. One of them was, like, I want an internship. One that of is them true. is, I want a mentorship. One of them was, I just want to transfer to your class. It's like, none of these were struggling students. They were yeah. just a pretty girl, beautiful, <laughs> because one of the overwhelmingly used words, but it's like, you're just a girl that I'm attracted to, and I'll find a reason. Like, no, except you. <laughs> like, 
I mean, just tell me that. But okay. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's like none of those circumstances were about a struggling student. Like you were keeping her grades. Kiki, the main, I guess, narrator of the mm-hmm. documentary, dropped out of school because it was like, I'm not even, I can't even interact with this professor. I'm not getting anywhere and I can't yeah. keep going without my grades. It's like, yeah. what are you supposed to do in those circumstances? No, I do think, I do think that's, a, that's a huge issue. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's so funny because watching the documentary, um, you realize, like, I don't know if it's a one-to-one connection, but you realize that, like, yo, you, it's even closer than you would think, right? Like, so, like, the withdrawing, like, you don't have an exam grade typed in. Mm. Like, I know someone that, like, literally went to school, did all the, did everything, and at the end of the sem- last semester, even, the professor is like, oh, we can't find your papers. Yeah. And, you know, like, from the outside, the, the person, that's all the person said, right? Mm-hmm. The person didn't give any more, just, like, Concepts, they couldn't yeah. find the papers, they tried to fight through the school, mm-hmm. they had to just retake that class. Yeah. But now watching the documentary, I'm like, oh, like, yeah. is this why I couldn't find a yeah. papers? Because how do you go to, like, how do papers get missing? Like, it literally yeah. makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, damn, like, this is, and it's <sighs> like, literally, it's very common for people to, like, have exams missing. Like, it's actually a very common thing. Like, their paper, like, oh, yeah, I took the exam, but my papers are missing. They said yeah. they can't find And literally to me, I'm like, oh, they can't find it. Like, that means they're going to give you an A. Like, that's their that's fault. That's their fault. Like, <laughs> like, I can't imagine, like, because like like we've mentioned, I, I've gone up to professors many a time with whatever issues, like mm-hmm. outside of like an exam, it's like whatever issue, and I was never like worried or concerned for my for my like potential whatever in the class because I was worried the professor would do whatever to me. You know what I'm trying to say? And I can't imagine putting myself in that mindset where like every female I'm sure that goes to school abroad that's what they're thinking with any interaction with a professor that seems like it could go sideways like any male professor that might have given them one eye too many like you know i can't can you imagine putting yourself in that position i don't even think no, guys no. in nigeria can or not guys I mean, in Ghana point, can. yeah at this point they don't right i was actually seeing um where the one investigative journalist i forget her name but she was like the main one yeah, she went yeah. the furthest yeah and i was like yo yeah with one girl of those, yeah Girl, please. Girl, please. Like, press that panic button, girl, please. I was definitely scared for her. Yeah. But she um she had a conversation with me she was like literally like she literally had the conversation with literally like, oh, like so this is like girls are paying like basically the, the bottom face was like, Yeah, they're paying for with their, their body. With their bodies. Yeah. And she was like, Oh, but it's not fair to guys. Yeah. Like guys can't do the same thing and it's like, yeah. It's like And it's so funny because like the way she worded it, I it was clearly to appeal to him in a way that the other way wouldn't work. Meaning, usually you would be like, oh, it's not fair. Like, why should I have to pay with my body? Guys don't. She said it in a way where it's, oh, but then girls get like an unfair advantage advantage to put to like make appeal to him in a different way than the obvious. And he still didn't really take the bait. He was like, I mean, yeah, duh. Like, what? That's just not how it. That's crazy. I I mean, even to that point, I feel like when you hear about sexual abuse, I feel like there's still this antiquated way of looking at it where you expect it to be more violent or like groping and things of the sort, like rape in like the most violent sense. You know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. And people forget about these subtle nuances and think, subtle approaches. I think what this documentary really showed was grooming. Exactly. Because grooming That's is like a word they always at. put. Exactly. Like you see it a lot, but like, I think if you've never been through that, like you don't understand what it That's means. That's what I mean. But yeah. literally when I was watching, like, especially like the Boniface guy, because yeah. he was just like the star of the documentary. Like, <laughs> watching him, I was like, this is this grooming. Because literally, like, he took his time. He wasn't in a rush. Yep. Like, he would drop hints like, oh, you're beautiful type thing. But like, it wasn't in a rush. And like, he literally, he laid out the landscape to her. He told her everything. It was like, this is how it goes. Yeah. He, was, he wasn't like, this, this is, is how it goes yeah. and this is how it's going to be. Yeah. He's like, this is how it goes. And then eventually he's like, okay, like, now it's your turn. Like, you've been schooled. But didn't you see that escalation? Like, first it was like, I'm going to introduce God into this and have this weird ass, long ass prayer. Oh, right. Did you and see like, the prayer? No, first oh. of all, that prayer, we have to talk about the prayer. <laughs> okay. Because I was telling someone that he is like diseased. He's like a demon. Oh. You see how he was praying? Like, I swear, like, he was getting, like, sexual satisfaction. Oh, for sure. Did from you, a prayer. Did you see like, the oh smile, God. the smirk, the the way in which he said it? Like, the way was shaking his legs. The way was Yo, shaking. Yo, he couldn't sit she, still. Like, like she, she, she mentioned, was like, like she his was, legs she was were dry wide open. open. He was dry up in the air. Like, he it was, was, it was in the air absolutely while disgusting. While calling God and saying in Jesus' name. Yo, he said. In oh. cases like his, it's like, that's when you're being a, a pastor out of, like, like the, this type of gratification or this type of um, access. It's yeah. not because of, you know, the 
the typical real reason why you should be a pastor. But I say that to say, like, you could see the escalation from, like, prayer and, like, saying you're beautiful every day to by the end where that panic room situation was taking place where he did become very domineering. And, mm-hmm. and, and again, not in the way we all expect. Like, something as subtle as getting up to go to the bathroom, you're leaving her there to be stuck with her feelings, to be a little bit shaken up. Like, you're mm-hmm. going there to... Get yourself together, like, okay, what's the next step? And you're also thinking about how it's gonna make her feel. Like, starting with the wine and everything of that situation is like, okay, that's clearly the escalation. That's clearly how it, it takes place. You're not in a rush, like you said. You didn't do it from the onset like that. Like, you knew what yeah. you were doing at the beginning so you could get to the end. Because imagine the next time she would have seen him for, like, any, like, if this was a real situation and there yeah. was a next time. And I think it would be think, that much worse. And I think that, the, uh, like, the, the really powerful thing from that scene yeah. was not just, like, she, so she stayed a really long time in the scene. Like, yeah. she tried to go all, as long as she as possibly long could. As possible, like, yeah. she stayed way too long for yeah. me anyway. Like, I was, like, that was just too dangerous. But she stayed as long as she could. Like, literally, like, he hugged her, a weird hug Ooh, and all she that. Was, like, she had to calm herself down, finished, knowing... She was physically shaking. Even, like, after he hugged her, you're like, oh, like, look at you, you're shaking. Oh. Ah, small girl. Like, you're a baby. Like, but, like, and I, what I was trying to get to was, like, the way that he reacted to her shaking and stuff. And yeah. so, I don't know if they, she caught it, but I caught it. Listen, is that if she wasn't doing it for the purpose that she was doing yeah. it for, like, she would definitely go back and it would go further. Because that's what I'm said, saying. Her, what she said about it was, like, it makes her feel so small. Yeah. Like, when he was saying that. Yeah. And, you can easily imagine a situation where, like, now you're feeling small. You don't want to be small. You're going to be defensive. And funny enough, you're going to be defensive in a way that's going to hurt you the most. And even if it's not out of defense, it's like, oh, I've already gone this far. Like, I can't. I, mean, I, I need. Like, the fact that you get to that position in the first place yeah. is because you need something out of that person. Yeah. And so, like, I've already gone this far. I'm so close to getting what I need. I just need to see him one more time. And yeah. you know, like, by then, he knows, like, oh, she's come back to me three, four times. Okay, now I know I can get as far as I want. Now I yeah. know I can keep escalating. And, like, it's, again, like, <laughs> think about the girl that doesn't have that panic button. Yeah. Like, you saw how shook she was. She was calming herself down. She was like, you know, calm down, calm down. And she that, that, that's with her knowing that, okay, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm out of this. Like, I'm going to be safe. Yeah. Think about those girls who aren't. And a lot of them might do whatever they do because I have to. I don't know what else this is going to turn into otherwise. Like, yeah. just tapping I mean, into that it's, psyche. It's, just, a, it's a desperation. And yeah. Especially, like, in Nigeria and African countries, we know, like, how important education mm-hmm. is. Like, Mm-hmm. Even if we know, like, it's not guaranteed you're going to get a job. Like, but literally, you almost have to be educated to have doors yeah. open for you. Yeah. So, like, imagine coming from a family. Like, maybe your parents didn't go to college. They're working hard to, pay to for, get you yeah. through. Yeah, because it's not, like, scholarships are not as common. Yeah. Thing. Like, you're usually paying your way through. Yeah. So, it's like, you you know that, like, you can't go back home. Or you feel like you can't go back yeah. home and tell your parents, like... You can imagine, yeah. Yeah, and it's so crazy because you really can. Like, even the Kiki story, like, it was... It was really sad, but it was really sad because it was like, yo, she like she talked about like her dad wasn't alive, and yeah. she felt like if her dad was alive, but like her mom was alive, but like I don't know her family, you, don't, you yeah, never know, you don't know. But it's like, damn, like you, you really do have a support system, but in that moment, you don't feel you like don't it, feel like and so you go through it alone, and you know the worst can happen when you drop out, or like the other girl said, like so now she's like suicidal, and she's trying to kill herself multiple Four times, times yeah. and it's like it doesn't have to be like that. Mm-hmm. So I think we're in a situation now where we know more about it, right? It's more in our faces. And I think it's everyone's duty to be like, even if someone that you don't think is going through anything, like just let people know that like, yo, know, like you have support you your back, yeah. in any kind of situation. Cause I think, and you feel supportless. You feel like yeah. there's no one to help you. And I think we have to call out the universities as well. Oh, yeah. Because it's Ew. pretty ridiculous Messy. that there could be a Gross. cold room yeah. on campus. What is that? What the fuck is that? It's, I'm sorry. Excuse my language, room. but come on. It's the cold room. Why is that anywhere on campus? Why is there disco? Like, what is disco, disco life lights. happening in, on a campus? <laughs> How is that a senior lounge? Like, even if it was just professors going there, why is there a disco light there? Even it's, if you're not yeah. bringing students there, it's very inappropate. And funny enough, like kind of you just said, like even if it's just professors, like they're female professors, like like what? female professors have to be like <laughs> they probably have their own documentary <laughs> of the stuff that they have to go through, hey. like because they work with these same men and these same men have this mentality. And even though they target younger girls because they're more desperate, like. They, if you have that mentality, it's not like access to anything, exactly, any like anyone, you have person, any kind of yeah. power. So even if you're just like the dean of the the school department, or something, yeah. department, if you have a female professor under you, you might feel like you have power over her. Now you have the same dynamic. So 
It's you know crazy. how much of a system it was? It's like that room when we you know had a glimpse into it, she was mentioning how like someone that even bring her there would say, Oh, come dance with me, blah blah blah. Like nobody it wasn't like everybody was like, Who what is this seventeen year old girl in the senior room? It's like, Oh, okay. It's the norm. Another it's one the norm. another one for me it's to the norm. and and it's yeah, up. like I'm just like I'm sure there's probably some drugs in there. Like, yeah. I can imagine girls who get drugged in there, like all kinds of crazy for things. Sure. So it's like I just don't understand like how that like and like we said, we have to call out the universities. Like it's ridiculous that that would exist on campus. You would know about it. And their statements are very, very meek. Their statements are like, oh, we don't support this. We're not tied to them. We have nothing. We're not associated to the cold room. I was like, you, that's not, your statement the should cold be like, room is there. <laughs> yeah, like you need to, first of all, anyone that's like even on camera related to anything, any kind of, any kind of stain on them, they just get fired immediately. Like, forget about the benefits. Like, just go through the motion. Like, you need to make an example of some of these people. I mean, literally, we found people for you to make an example of. Exactly. Like, make a strong example. And then change your policies, like make it, don't create the environment for this to happen, right? Because I think another thing that's really important, I was listening to Malcolm Gladwell, you know Malcolm yeah. Gladwell? He has a new book. What's it called? It's called Talking to Strangers. I was literally just talking about this on um, an interview I was watching. With yeah, <laughs> Talking to Strangers is a really good book. You yeah. can read it or listen to it mm-hmm. if you're into books or anything like that. Okay. Um, but one of the things that they talked about in the chapters was um, how people don't just do things out of doing it, like just because they want to. Mm-hmm. There also has to be the opportunity, mm. right? And it sounds like such a simple and basic thing. They they, they did it more with like people that commit suicide. Yeah. They were like, um, in England apparently, you used to be able to um, CO two like at the oven. You yeah. used to get CO two like literally like a pipe. And when people found out, they would kill themselves. And it was like a really easy way to die. Like it's painless. You don't look ugly. Like you, basically, like if you want to kill yourself and you want to like if you're a yeah, vain, yeah. like it's the best way to kill yeah. yourself. As bad as that sounds. Yeah. And I was like. People were killing themselves, like a lot of housewives were killing themselves. Mm-hmm. When they like stopped, they fixed the technology so you couldn't do that anymore, suicides went down. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's not that less people want to kill themselves, it's just that like, they don't even have that weight. Faster, exactly. Yeah. And like, even with cars, like, you know, cars used to be like CO2 emission, yeah, yeah. you could lock yourself in the garage and all that yeah. stuff. Before it used to be way easier. Now, for you to do it, like, it t- you have to be there for a long time before yeah. you actually die. So yeah. it's like the opportunity is way less. Yeah. And I think it's the same situation. Like, yeah. As a university, you can't eradicate behavior in people, right? People are going to do what they're going to do. But you have to not create the situation. Like, don't let it be so easy. Like, don't let it be so easy for a professor to create this, to go through this, and not get punished. Like, you have to make it like, you get punished. We have a real system. And there's no cold room. Like, cold room has to go. Yeah. Senior don't need a stop floor. And you have to, like, welcome the idea of victims coming up and, like, speaking their truth or whatever you want to yeah. say. Like, I feel like some of these professors were able to say, I've never had a case against me. And, yeah, like, yeah, that's a very like, powerful that's crazy. tactic. That's crazy. And it's, like, it's not because you don't have people that you've done shit to. It's because, you know, the system isn't there that allows yeah. for people to say something. Like, yeah. I know, like, if at my university some shit went down, I know where to go and how to get my voice heard. I feel like that should be the case anywhere. Yeah. Um, and, of course, this documentary made me think of just, like, the landscape outside of school, like how this ends up getting, you know, perpetuated elsewhere, like in the workforce and things of the sort. And it's like, it, it starts somewhere. It starts like Mary was saying in secondary school or before, oh, way listen, before. It starts we have to at have home. A, a longer conversation, yeah. especially like, I don't want to be calling out African people because those are our people. But yeah. I know just from being in that environment, like I know it's just different, it's just different. especially the age that yeah. like the age that is literally like they yeah. don't even some people do not even think about it, which is scary. Like, that Boniface, no, gross guy. Like, I remember one of the scenes was the girl that was um, investigating him. I remember, I can't remember exactly the words or how it was, pl- like, presented. Yeah. But I remember she made it, like, it was clear she was 17. Mm-hmm. And, like, he was saying stuff along the lines of, I can grip girls like you, I get girls like you all the time. Yeah, even me, weird. he even acknowledged that me in my 50s. Like, he acknowledged his age. It's like... yeah. I just it's like he just didn't see the fact that it wasn't a normal relationship. A normal like thing. somehow in his mind, like he felt like, yeah, man, I can get any girl, yeah. seventeen year old girls. Like, oh, like that's why would you even like why do you even be proud of yeah. that? Like I don't know what's the accomplishment. Like, <laughs> like come on, get out of here. So you're competing with seventeen year old boys. Like what? What yeah. do you feel? Like why do you feel some type of way about it? Like oh yeah, no, definitely all Ugh. the people that think this way, professors and stuff like that, like definitely very sick people. Um, but like we kind of mentioned, like it starts really early. So it's a lot of work to be done, like by all people. Yeah. But 
yeah, we'll just recommend if you haven't seen the documentary, go see it. It's you very powerful. Definitely see and it. yeah, it makes it makes a difference just watching it. And yeah. even supporting the people that made the documentary, like let them know that like, like yo, we support this work. Like because yeah. they put themselves in the line of danger. They For really sure. did. Um so and they did a really good job. Like those, yeah. I wanna have the cameras they have. Like I wanna be secretly taping people like that, right? <laughs> um so yeah, I think we kinda wrap up there. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh all right guys. Um we're back with shout outs. Super quick. Um, I guess we could start with our social media followers and some of those that we hold dearly. We appreciate a lot. Um, one of them being my savage truth. She's, she's a loyal, loyal follower of ours, loyal listener of ours, and we truly appreciate it. We notice all of your um, interactions with us, and and you know we love you for it. Yeah, we love you. Thanks for supporting mm-hmm, us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, also. We have another one that's always, you know, always on our line. She's like, you know, a perpetual (laughs) um, commenter and things of the sort. Her name is Move Out The Way. Um, And she, you know, she's just a great follower once again. And speaking of, um, we want to give her a little birthday shout out. Yeah, happy birthday. Happy birthday. We don't just do this for anybody, though, guys. We're not just shouting birthdays out left and right. You have to be a... Regular follower. Just hey, guys, by like, the way, she just turned... I want to say she just turned 23. Why are you putting her age out there? Did she I ask? Put it out there. Did she ask? Yeah, I'm submitting her resume. 23. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? If she you're cute. about that life. She's smart. She funny. Send your application. <laughs> and I'll, we'll yeah. take it from there. But yeah, Scorpio season is wrapping up. So um, we're at the tail end of it. And we, we wanted to make sure she was um, given a birthday wish. So there we go. Yeah. Next. <laughs> Next. We're also going to shout out Kiki Mordi. Who's mm-hmm. a person that did the documentary we just right, talked about? Right. Um, a lot of good job, right? A good, good job mm-hmm. doing the documentary yeah, and everything. Sure. And you know, it's kind of a sad story, her story, but I think that she's, you know, coming out on the, on the end. It's yeah. A winner, yeah. right? Yeah. Triumphant. Agreed. Yeah. So yeah, just shout her out for for putting the work in. Um, also, I don't know if you saw Google. Did you know how to do like a little doodle dance for random people? So they did uh, Fumilayo Ransom Kuti. Two nice. days ago, that's nice. Felakuti's mother. For those that don't know, um, she's famously known as like her quiz question is like, "Who's the first Nigerian woman to drive?" To drive, a car? yeah. That's her. <laughs> so they did. They, they they honored her. It would have been her like hundred and nineteenth birthday Ooh. or something like that. So yeah, shout out to her. Shout out to Google for yeah being Yeah, mm-hmm. I always like when they do that. Um, yeah, that's all my shout outs. Okay. I guess Halloween. Parties are going to be popping up next weekend. So if you sure. want to party, go party. Are you a Halloween person? Because I'm not. I'm not a Halloween person in terms yeah. of dressing up. I'm a Halloween party person in terms of partying. Oh, like I'll go. Yeah, like yeah. I'm a party goer. But I'm not like... It's just like any other party. Like you'll go. But I'm not like a Halloween fiend. No, Halloween like. parties are different. I'll give them that. Halloween parties are different. <laughs> no, that's Sure, I mean, saying. come on. Like, people are fucking dressed up. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, are you in the spirit? I'm in the spirit and sense like I'm gonna go party with them because I know sure, it's different, okay, but I'm not gonna dress up. Well, like, for me, I'm not in the spirit. I'm never, I'm never excited up. for Halloween. I'm never like, oh my god, what should I wear? It's like usually the day before I have a costume party. I'm like, oh, I have to figure something out. I don't know where you be going. Dra- draw some shit on my face. You need to change your life. Wear some bunny ears. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh yeah, and the other thing, Jadena is coming to DC apparently. He's oh really? Here. Are you gonna go see him? No, but <laughs> guys, go see Jadena. Go support our okay. Nigerian brother. You know, go go to the show and all that stuff, you know. I mean, yeah, go. I just think it's funny that you're telling people to go to something you're not going to. I'm busy. What you mean? I have work. I'm a working man. Sure. Jadena doesn't pay my bills. But mm-hmm. I definitely like his album. It was really good. Mm-hmm. A lot of good music. Mm-hmm. You know, he did his little turn mm-hmm. more to Afro mm-hmm. beats and stuff, which I appreciate. Yeah. But he did it like in an authentic way. It wasn't yeah. fake. So, yeah, that's it. Anything else you want to tell the people? No, I think that's it. All right. I think that's it. And yeah. We'll Follow us, subscribe. Thank you In for listening. Better.